Okay, great. Thank you so much for having me here to discuss uh, this paper. I can tell you that I find this to be uh, the most fun conference I attend uh, each year. And I actually just want to applaud the creativity and the ways that you've changed it up. Um, the discussion today, you can see I wasn't asked to discuss the papers as much as to say AI will reduce the total number of jobs. True, false, uncertain. I'm not supposed to say uncertain. I'm supposed to take a position. So let's see, where are we? Well, we started, we just heard from two new papers, new evidence. AI will reduce the total number of jobs. No, says one paper. Automation increases employment at the plant firm and industry level, higher sales, lower prices, benefits of automation greater in industries that face international uh, competition. Yes, says the other. AI firms and wages evidence from India. AI displaces jobs. A 1% increase in AI jobs leads to a 3.61% decrease in non-AI jobs and reduces wage offers across the distribution. What's right? Well, I like the paper uh, by Xavier the best because I'm a technology optimist and it, can, and it shows that if you widen the scope, you'll see just how automation can actually increase jobs. And that you know, perhaps highlights places where uh, Asimoglu and Restrapo uh, uh, didn't look hard enough for the potential benefits. Okay, now I hope you know that was a somewhat tongue in cheek set of comments around the problems of confirmation bias, which is there's lots of studies out there that are gonna show us that sometimes technology and automation increases the number of jobs. Sometimes it decreases the number of jobs. And I can find a study that confirms whatever I want to believe um, if that's what I want. And so we have to be really careful if we're gonna answer this question to not just pick and choose the evidence that builds the case we want to, but actually try to assess the, the evidence in as unbiased a way as possible. There are two big competing ideas. The two big competing ideas are that technology displaces workers through technological unemployment because fewer people are needed to produce the same amount of stuff and the demand for stuff simply doesn't increase enough to offset the displacement. The other idea is that automation creates productivity gains that lead to price decreases, which increase market demand and the scale of production sufficiently to offset the displacement. Which one's right? Well, on a small scale, do the productivity gains offset displacement within a firm? On a medium scale, do they offset displacement within an industry? or within a small geographical region? On a large scale, do they offset displacement within a country? What about an even larger scale? Are they gonna offset displacement on a global scale? So answering this question, will we get more or less jobs, really is going to depend on the scale at which we're trying to answer the question. Assessing whether AI will reduce the total uh, number of jobs, the uh, paper by Xavier and his co-author said, because of these multiple and countervailing economic forces, understanding the aggregate and distributional impacts of automation across workers, consumers, and producers is fundamentally an empirical question. I, I'm an empirical labor economist, so that sounds right to me, but is it an empirical question? We can measure the past in a particular scenario, but how much external validity is there for predicting the future with AI? How do we combine many empirical studies across industries, across time, across technology, across points of development to inform our predictions? And what exactly is it that we're trying to predict? Will AI reduce the total number of jobs in the world? Let's think about global trade and automation. Again, pulling from uh, the paper by Xavier and his co-authors. And, and I should say that uh, the paper uh, by Alex, Ashley, and Catherine, I really uh, appreciated and I was really struck by the findings being very similar to what you see in developed contexts because my intuition probably was that you'd see something different in an emerging economy. Um, and I think expanding our evidence around the globe is gonna be very important for answering these questions. Then uh, coming back to this quote, in a globalized world attempts to curb domestic automation in order for, to protect domestic employment may be self-defeating due to foreign competition. 
The problem is you can't just smash the machines in your own country. You'd have to shut the world out. And, you know, we, uh, we've are, we learned in the pandemic, you can't really do that. Uh, lots of countries tried. I actually just spent some time in Fortress Australia. And believe me, they're doing everything they can to shut the world out and haven't been able to succeed. So the problem is smashing the machines around the entire globe is probably going to be a lot harder than smashing the machines in the 1700s. And even that wasn't that successful. So do developed countries need to fear a global shift of jobs towards emerging economies? So again, is the right question, will AI reduce the total number of jobs in what? In the United States? Maybe, because maybe they'll shift to India. Although today's findings, maybe not. Maybe AI doesn't confer any kind of advantage to emerging economies. Um, if we... Though think about gains from increasing comparative advantage and specialization, um, again, to quote from uh, the paper um, from Xavier and his co-authors, competition with international suppliers providing closed substitutes can explain why the relationship between automation and employment can remain positive even at the industry level because the response of consumer demand can be large. In other words, if you only sell within your country, it's harder for the scale effect to be big enough to get a net positive impact on employment, but there are these positive externalities from globalization. Still, there are limits. Demand elasticities of substitution are going to depend on how much we're consuming, and these estimates aren't necessarily predictive of a future with even more automation. The bottom line is, if we look at the United States, We've had enormous growth in productivity. We've had enormous growth in the economy. It's all happened in the service sector. We don't wanna produce more stuff. And we see a flatlining, a shrinking of jobs in the goods producing sector, because there's just only so much stuff we wanna have. Some of that's because we're producing these goods internationally, but it's not all that. They're, you know, what, if, for any given thing for, that we might have, say cars, there's only so many cars we want. The idea of more jobs comes from new ideas for about new ways and things that we might consume. But maybe AI does reduce the total number of jobs. I, I think in some sense, of course, AI reduces the total number of jobs. Great, this is a great thing. And I come back to this quote by Thoreau, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is confirmed desperation. Unconscious despair is concealed even under what are called the games and amusements of mankind. There is no play in them for it comes after work. work less work is something that many of many people throughout history have sought. So I think bigger questions are does the impact of technology depend on how much bargaining power workers have? Are there positive externalities from work that mean that even with no labor market imperfections, we could get the wrong quantity of work from a societal perspective? So we may have fewer jobs. AI might reduce the number of jobs. The question isn't, uh, does it reduce the number of jobs or increase the number of jobs, but do we get the right number of jobs or the wrong number of jobs given the societal benefits of jobs? And if we think about our standard positive externalities, if we don't have any government intervention, we get a wrong lower quantity. Can we learn anything from the fact that a global pandemic that resulted in fewer jobs seems to have given workers more bargaining power? That's certainly something that people are wrestling with right now. It seems almost counterintuitive. And yet, post-pandemic, people are reevaluating their working lives. 28% of US workers say that they're likely or very likely to quit if they have to go back to the office. 63% of people now want to work remotely compared to 38% in 2019. 55% of workers prefer to be remote at least three days a week. Only 21% of executives now think employees should be in the office five days a week. 55% of Americans in the labor force want to seek new employment in the next 12 months, uh, even greater for younger people. 70, nearly 70% 70 of parents plan to make some kind of change with 25% of them saying they want to work less. 25% of parents say coming out of the pandemic, they want to work less. So bring on the AI reducing the number of jobs, they want to work less. But at the same time, the pandemic spurred entrepreneurship. Uh, and so 
I think when I ask this question, will AI reduce the number of jobs in the world, in a country, in a developed country? I hope the answer is yes. In the world, I'm not sure about the answers. There's a lot of countries where there's really not a lot of formal jobs. In an industry, certainly. For a firm, I hope so, because I don't want individual firms to grow with unlimited power. Which question are we trying to answer? Ultimately, the question is not about the number of jobs or the hours of work, but whether AI can be harnessed to improve most people's lives, or will it increase inequality and hardship for some? The answer is going to depend on policy. Unregulated AI left to benevolent industrialists, and benevolent is very seriously in quotes there, will enrich a few at the expense of many and has the potential to er erode entire societies. We're already seeing evidence of this, and I think it's unregulated AI that we need to worry about. Thank you.